Hi, how are you going? Today's video is all about making sauerkraut juice. I'm the commander in your corner, Tim Thomas, and I believe that good people are everywhere and just a little bit of encouragement goes a long way. Today, I want to encourage you on the to see the benefits of having a healthy gut, and a big part of that is wrapped up in the benefits of having sauerkraut juice regularly. Now, doing things regularly is the key. And I found that I really struggled to have a, a spoonful of crunchy sauerkraut each day, but I could knock back a little bit of juice easy, easy. And the longer you do anything, the more benefits you'll get from it. So today I want to show you how to make the convenient, the very powerful and convenient uh, sauerkraut juice in your home so you can have it as part of your daily routine and just, just keep your eye out for all the benefits you're going to experience. I'll include a few links in the description. I'm the commander of your corner, Tim Thomas. Good people are everywhere and just a little bit of encouragement goes a long way. You are going to love today's video. Okay, so here we go, sauerkraut juice, what you need. Cabbage, now I always like to go a red and a white cabbage because it creates a nice pink coloring to it. And um, you know, they cost less than $10 for both of them. Uh, I, the salt I use, I like to use a macrobiotic salt. Okay, it's just this gray looking salt. It looks a bit wet, but that's the way salt kind of comes out of the ocean. It's got all the ocean goodness in it. Pink Himalayan salt is another good one. Hang on, Jack wants to go inside. Okay. And um, water, okay, fresh water. That's been filtered. I don't know if Bubba wants to go outside. And uh, you don't have to be a commando to do this. And you've got two options here. You've got a crock pot, all right? Now, these can be a bit expensive. Um, they're okay, but I tend to like things that are a bit more robust. If I drop that, that would shatter. This thing here, very cheap. And you go to the home brewing section, you get this little valve that keeps the air out. Um, and the other thing you need is a blender, all right? As opposed to making sauerkraut where you have to, where you have to shred the cabbage, and that can take a while, juice, all you have to do is blend it up into really small pieces. You'll see what I mean when we get into that. Um, so here we go. We just need salt, cabbage, water, brewing containers, and a blender, and we're good to go. So with the cabbage, you take off the outside leaves. Don't throw them away because they can come in here later on. And take them off. Keep them. And what you're doing is cutting out this core part here to start with. Don't know if that should pop out or not. All right, there we go. Okay, and you cut this up so it essentially fits inside your blender. So we pack a medium amount of uh, cabbage in there. Put it on, make sure that's all locked in. Turn it up. Give it a bit of a shake. Wait until it stops spinning. And you sort of have to just push it down. You can see I've tried to push down when it hasn't stopped spinning there. Put it back on. Sort of have to keep pushing it down, making sure it's all in there. And yes, it does. It does get a bit messy. You can see I'm making a bit of a mess here. Oh, why is that not working? There we go. You've got to lock it into place. And that's still not working. Why? On, on. There we go. All right. All right, there you go. So that's about the consistency we want. Then we get rid of that bad boy. And we just keep adding it to our bucket. And uh, then we add our salt. I'm using the macrobiotic salt, but I've just blended it up so it becomes more powdery, not just have the rock in there. So we'll add that up in a second. Okay, it's the same thing with our red cabbage, but red cabbage is a bit more dense. So maybe just add a little less into it. And um, crack it on. Yep, she's all working. And she blends around it. Give it a bit of a shake. No, no, yeah. Looking good. 
Oh, this blending up nicely. Don't need a... Yep, that's a really good consistency. And then we um, we start adding that to the uh, the cabbage, and that'll give it a nice pink hue. Okay, at this point here, I've got both cabbages ground ground up, and I'm going to be using about half a cup of Olsen's macrobiotic sea salt. Now I blended that sea salt up so it wasn't just rocks, it's, it's now powder. So I'm gonna add half a cup of salt to that, thereabouts. Hopefully that's enough. Um, and if it gets too salty, you just take some of the water out afterwards um, once you add the water. And then from here, excuse my fingers, from here, Okay, once that salt's in there, we want to start getting into it and massaging it around. Obviously making sure your hands are clean, but we want to work that sea salt all through the cabbage. Okay, got to get down the bottom and work it through. Now some people um, add as they go, but that's you, you really only need to do that if you're doing sauerkraut. Um, but you've got to get salt to every part of the cabbage. Now what happens is if you know about the process of osmosis, uh, the salt starts to draw out the, um, the the liquids, okay, and then the essentially the pickling process begins. Okay, so making sure, and you, you know it's starting to work when you start to feel it getting a bit foamy, because that's the, uh, guys, Shannon, just turn that down a bit please. So that's the, um, that's the salt doing its work. Okay, but making sure you've got to get salt absolutely everywhere because that's critical to making the process work. Okay, because you're setting the conditions for all this stuff to turn into something so much more. And I've got a phone call coming in. I'll talk to you in a second. All right, so here we have, I've worked it through and you can see it's starting to work. All the water is starting to pull away and the, the things are feeling a bit, a bit sudsy. No, that's not for you, Bubba. Um, they're starting to feel a bit sudsy, a bit bubbly, but you let that sit for at least 10 minutes, okay? You've got to let the salt do the work on the cabbage before we add the water. So you've massaged it through, the salt's doing its work, and at least 10 minutes later, that's when we're going to add the, uh, the fresh water. All right, so we've got, that's been sitting for 10 minutes, we've got the fresh water, and what we're going to do is obviously add the water to that, and then we're going to use the cabbage leaves outside we're going to jam that down and we're going to have these uh, plastic these weights to go on top okay to keep it to keep it all down all right okay we've added the water and what we need to do now is just test it to see if it's not too salty um, yeah that's drinkable I might even add a little bit more salt to that um, because I this, it's the salt that sort of keeps it preserved all right so I'll give that a stir up and I'll get that saltish salt mixture right. If it is too salty, simply tip the water out and add, add fresh water. Okay, the salt's already done its work on the cabbage. Now it's just a matter of getting it into a drinkable commodity for you uh, at the end of the day. I was going to use this uh, pot here, but I thought, you know what, I saved the mess. I'll just keep it all in one and uh, we'll see how we go. And now we're ready to put the lid on here. Um, make sure there's no bits of cabbage around the edges, okay? because there's gonna be gas coming out of that that'll keep that sterile. It's any air that gets in there that's gonna create a problem. And that's why we have this lid. Now this little plug that's in there, I've taped it on both sides because I don't want any air getting in there whatsoever. Okay, so no cabbage around the edges and that salty water will protect that. And then the gas that gets produced from the sauerkraut will come up through here and come out this little bubbler. Okay, so we'll make sure that's, that's down tight. Okay, nice and tight, okay, because this is going to be here for six to eight weeks. And then we add just the tiniest bit of water into here. Okay, and that will create a little, um, uh, a little plug, air sort of pocket um, to keep the air coming out and the gases uh, staying in and protecting this area here. All right, so this is going to be placed in a cool area and um, probably an area because it does it does let out some smelly gases to start with. So don't sort of keep it in a place in, a, in an area where there's people with sensitive noses. <laughs> 
we'll see how this goes in uh, eight weeks. Oh, I forgot to add, it's always a handy thing when you actually put this in. So I put this in, I go in, 1st July, out, 1st September. Okay. And that way you, you sort of keep track of when it goes in and, and when it's supposed to come out. Okay, so I've put this uh, in my shed, out of the sun, uh, gravity boots, it was a good idea in the 70s. And, uh, but because it's up high, I'm just gonna put it so it's obvious, um, in July 1st, out 1st September. Okay, so every time I walk in here, I'll say, that's when it comes out, and there's some gravity boots I'll probably never use. Okay, seven to eight weeks later, we're back in the shed. That sauerkraut I've been looking at for the last couple of months is ready to be opened. I use those gravity boots every single day. I'm very excited to see what's in this bucket. All right, check it out. What do you reckon, dog? Come in. Mama, Mama can probably smell this too. That's right. You said your name. Okay, all right. A little bit of tape came off, but that's all right. This looks like good sauerkraut, okay? There's no mold, the seal held. The only time that goes uh, problematic is if that seal doesn't hold. Um, so this is looking really good. I'm really excited. We're gonna strain this out and decant it. Oh, uh, and by the way, um, for the... As this thing is, um, as this thing is uh, decanting, collect a bunch of, you know, milk bottles and stuff. Uh, to, 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 so you can put all your kraut juice in it. Um, there's no point having like 20 litres of juice hanging around with no containers to put in it. So in the time that you've you know, got it waiting in your shed, just start collecting these ones. That's a good jungle tip. So this is a very exciting and happy time for me. We take the, the bucket, we decant it out, and just have a look at these incredible colours that have come out. The combination of green and red uh, cabbage looks fantastic. And this kraut here, this is still perfectly edible. You can use that in all sorts of meals. So there's still plenty of product there, but guess what I'm gonna be using more regularly? The juice. Every single day, the power of mother nature in my kitchen. I hope you got something from this video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit notifications. I'm the commander in your corner, Tim Thomas. I believe that good people are everywhere and just a little bit of encouragement goes a long way. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit notifications. This is a very new channel and your liking, subscribing, and sharing it makes a big difference and is very much appreciated at this early stage.